Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Greetings, MechWarriors. This is the help file and tutorial for Battletech Roster Builder version 1.0. Just to make it clear, because there is a pre production version, this is the actual production and release version. You will find things in here not in the other file. So, first of all, this application is meant for you to organize your combat units into organizations and to easily and accurately build rosters. So let's get right into it, shall we? The first step is profiles. When you load a profile, it becomes the active profile and it remains the active profile uh, no matter how many times you run the roster builder until you change the profile. You can have an unlimited number of profiles but only one profile can be active at a time. As you can see right here, Mark is the active profile and Mark has 63 units uh, in his various organizations. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through here and we're going to go through all the functions, which is a new profile, open a profile, edit a profile, and delete a profile. And then we'll talk about in another section, manual check for updates. So when you create a profile, new profile, when you first run this application, you will also get this screen. So you put in a profile name. It can be your name, can be any any name you want, and we'll just say Bob here. Default roster size, uh, whatever roster size you want to build to most often is what I would put in here. For my case, I'm going to put 6,000 points. You can change all of the parameters here, the roster size, the variance, and the year of battle when you actually build a roster. So don't fret too much over this. Plus, you can change it later. I'll show you that here in just a minute. So uh, your variance, as you well know in Battletech, you can easily be... 500 points under or 10 points over. So I recommend a roster variance of 1%. Please always check with your prospective opponent. Let him know about this and if you're going to be using it. On a 6,000 point list, 1% is 60 points. So the application will not complain if you are up to 6,060 points. Uh, the default year of battle, this is for if you're going to be using uh, any particular era, like pre-clan or pre-jihad, whatever. I just set it to 4444 because I like playing everything all the time. So once you accept this, yep, we'll get you a little window here. It says your profile is created and ready to go. Hit OK to start creating your organization. So next step in the profile is to open a profile. So we'll go ahead and we will open a profile. It will give us uh, a choose a file window and I'm going to go ahead and select mark and I'm back to my 63 units. Once I've done this, I can go down here and delete file and I can delete Bob. 
and it says this profile and all associated data will be permanently deleted. Press OK to confirm and it's gone. So that is your profile functions. So the last thing I wanted to talk about in the profile menu is manual check for updates. If you select this, it will phone home to the Battletech zone and see if there's any updates to the master unit list or if uh, I've released a new version of the application. So when you click this, it will go out, it will find the information, and right here it says, I just checked with Comstar and you are up to date. Please check back in a month or so to check again. So, yeah, I recommend you check about once a month just in case uh, I update them all. The master unit list is updated automatically when you select this option. Uh, it it's all invisible but downloading the uh, a new app that's up to you it will open a web page and allow you to uh, download the app if you so desire so all right so let's talk about the configure menu now the configure menu has three items. This is where we can uh, add, edit, and delete organizations. And we can enter custom or non-canon units. And then we can assign units from the master list that comes with roster builder and any custom units, any non-canon units to uh, your organizations. So let's start off here with organizations. When you first create a profile, you will have the opportunity to go ahead and create your first one. Uh, it, it gives you a placeholder uh, battalion, and you can just go ahead and put in a name, but uh, if you look here, we have eight different types of uh, organizational structures. And this is the one that's selected right here, IS Standard Battalion. We also have uh, Standard Battalion with Command Land, so I'll let you read the rest. But when you mouse over, you will see what each battalion uh, is or how each battalion is composed. So in order to create a new one, you just select what kind of battalion you want and you put in a name and we'll put in Damage Incorporated. You can have an organization name of up to 48 characters, but I ask that there be some kind of break uh, approximately in the middle so it can cut it in half, make it two lines, kind of like this right here. So we have our name in, we have our desired uh, structure selected, and we can add organization and magically here the uh, the new battalion arrives uh, whenever you see the X here and there's X's all over the place when it comes to adding in, uh, adding units this is how we delete things now for an organization if I click this it will uh, and there's units assigned to this organization it will give me the option to either just delete them or move them to another organization so I'll just go ahead and delete this and just like that it's gone and we can close window if you have a non 
Canon unit that you have created. I have thoughtfully added the appropriate functions so you can put them in. So if we enter a custom unit, we have a short name and a full name. So if you want to go with a Mantuffle uh, assault tank, obviously it's not going to fit into the unit short name, but just Mantuffle will. So we're just going to say uh, the mech, and we're going to use a full name of the the greatest max since that's longer and you'll notice it tells you 15 characters max 30 characters max and then for the unit model uh, greatest 1a uh, all these are pretty self-explanatory if you've ever built your own unit but we'll call it a 55 ton mech with a battle value of 18 38. It has a movement of, oh, we'll make them a 6 9 uh, with no jump. And then for a boost, you can do e either mask, TSM, or a supercharger. I know you can, in the rules, combine TSM with supercharger, but here you can't, not in this version. Year introduced, uh, it has to be a minimum of 2750, so I'll make it 2780. Rules level standard, this is going to depend upon the equipment you have equipped it with. Tech base, inner sphere, clan, or mixed. Unit roll, these are all the different unit rolls, so we're just going to make it a battle mech. The unit type, as you can see in the master unit list, it has some kind of role. Now, notice it's ambusher, brawler, juggernaut, missile boat. If we went to an aerospace, the unit roles are attack dog fighter, fast dog fighter, fire support. So you can properly set it and you don't have to worry about it. We'll make this guy a brawler. C3 network, we have master, a double master, a slave, uh, a C3i, and then boosted master, double boosted master, and boosted slave. So enter in the appropriate, or you can just leave it at none if there is none. Save and enter weapons. So at this point, we put in our weapons. If you take a look at other units in the database that I have, you will see how I declare it. But basically, I'm just going to give this guy two large lasers. So you make this singular, large laser, and you give that that. And, oh, let's put on there four... Four for medium lasers. Now, if you notice over here, it says custom unit data entry. All fields are mandatory. The accuracy of the data is your responsibility. I, I can't check this because I don't know things like structure and armor and and what kind of armor, none of that is in here, so I cannot do a complete BV uh, calculation, so it's all on you. So once we save the new unit, it will let us know that we have successfully saved it, and if we want, we can enter more. In this case, no. Now that we've got all of our units properly set, we can assign units to organizations. Uh, you can have up to 10 organizations, so that's a lot of units. And whenever you see this orange, this is the default unit that is the first one. Uh, 
just because and it will whenever you enter a unit it will always go to this so please be careful I'm working on keeping it to one unit in the uh, in the next version so let's say I want to enter an atlas so I can go atlas ATL find this unit and it will give all of the atlases that is in the database and uh, all these units over here these are the ones that are already entered and as you can see I have no atlases in here this is all by weight so we have locusts set to start at 20 tons and we end up with a behemoth and king crab and an annihilator over here at 100 tons so we don't see an atlas so eh, let's go with it oh you know what I don't know what all these do so when we do a mouse over it says this atlas is a 100 ton 2153 point brawler battle mech with an inner sphere tech base that moves at 460 and has a weapon loadout of one Guardian ECM, one Rotary AC5, two SRM 6s, and two ERPPCs. So I can click on that and it comes immediately over to here. And again, we see the Xbox, not a game, but part of the game. And we can use that to take that right back out again so we can also click over to the other organizations and it will give whatever units that are part of it they're all set to different kinds which is why you're seeing more boxes for some and less for others so once we're done entering our units and by the way, if you collected, or if you have custom units, they will, that meet the criteria that you've put in the search box, they will always be the first mechs here. So once you're done with this, you can go ahead and hit close window. okay everybody now that we have set our profile we've set our organizations we've added units to our organizations now we come to the final and uh, most important part of the Battletech roster builder and that is to build rosters so we come over to the roster menu and we can create a roster new roster we can reprint an existing roster or we can delete an existing roster. So let's go ahead and go with a new roster. So uh, here are our defaults, roster size, variance, and year of battle. Uh, I'm going to bump this up to 12,000 points just because I'm going to be doing some big stuff. Uh, your default rules level is standard and we can set our uh, rules level these are all filters to determine how many units we're going to have uh, in our pool to draw from we can also select or deselect any specific kind of combat unit um, and then we can also select or deselect any uh, organization and if you notice these numbers here this is the number of units in each organization that you have once you have set these the way you like them you come down here to step five and you generate the unit pool now this will bring up a new window which will have up to three columns in a total of 75 units to draw from so 
And if you notice, we have some in green, some in blue, some in purple. These are C3 units of different types. The purple is your boosted units. The blue is your improved C3 or C3I. And the green is your regular uh, master slaves. So uh, I'm going to start off with a Locust 5W2. And I have a master down here in this Shiltron D. And for the boosteds, I'm going to go with a Vandal and the 3M Fury tank. And just a pair of Crab, King Crab number fives. And then if you notice here, I have a Trinity Medium Battle Armor. We have different colors to the left of each unit that tells you what unit is where. So um, we can obviously tell because we already know that all we have is crushers and group W. The red will be the crushers and the purple will be the uh, group W. So here we have a list. And if you notice here, for the C3 units, I can select either Network 1, 2, or 3. I'm going to put the standard C3 in Network 1. So right now I have just a Locust, which is a C3 slave. And it says here, C3 network status is inactive because there's not the appropriate level of units. So, but as soon as I add this Shiltron, which is a C3 master, these point values change because they now have an active C3 network. And I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to throw the boosted C3s into network 2. Again, these change once there is an active network, and we now have networks to status and finally we're going to throw these two king crabs into network three so again network three status is active because we have at least we have between two and six c3 eyes the battle armor if you notice here we can select four five or six suits to be in the net in the uh, in the unit and the points change immediately as soon as I select something um, and if I wanted to all right so right now I have a roster total of 12,051 I'm 51 points over but I'm on target because my 1% variance is 120 points now, this is going to put me over, but let's say I want to take one of the king crabs, and I want to make him a 3-5. So his gunnery is now 3, his piloting is 5. You notice that he's worth more points than his 4-5 counterpart, and I am over because I'm 504 points over. Now, watch down here, right here in this bottom right corner. When I take the King Crab back to a 4-5, the roster status says on target. This means it is somewhere between 90 and 101% and of the roster. And that means that you can print the roster. So, so sorry about the birds. Uh, so if we print the roster, we can give it a name, and you're just, it's going to be a legal Windows name. So, you know, don't put any question marks or exclamation points or anything like that in there. We'll just call it Test 1, and then we can print right now up to uh, these three documents. We have either the roster the battle calculation sheet, or the battle report notes. Now, I'm going to deselect them because uh, I don't need them to be printed. 
but no matter what you do when you create a roster you do create PDFs of these so you can always come back and reprint these so I'm going to say off to the printer it's going to go away and then it will print out these sheets this is your roster and we have unit and organization Kirsten's crushers or group W uh, and what the item is locust 5w2 Shiltron mobile fire support vandal fury command tank uh, we have our pilot scores we have our movement scores and we have our battle value and then we have a little line here underneath it says special notes part of c3 network one network two and network three and then five battle armor in squad and then we have our overall things we have roster target size variance total bv and total number of units now the second page this is our battle calculations form and it has all of our units and they have their full points they have their full points they have their half points down here in parentheses now this side here is for you to write down once you get to the uh, get to play the battle you write down your opponents units and their their point totals and then this total here is uh, for in just a minute so they can have up to 12 units so at the end of the battle you can easily circle either OK forced withdrawal off board dead or forced withdrawal and that's for all units on both sides and then we have this little table down here so if it's okay it's 100 percent of its battle value goes to you if it's in forced withdrawal and still on the board it's worth 50 percent to your opponents if it's in forced withdrawal but it made it off the table it's worth 50 percent to you and if it's dead it's worth a hundred percent of its battle value to your opponent so you would write down the BV total of worth of each unit as if it's okay dead or in forced withdrawal and you do the same over here and then you total up the points and I've thoughtfully provided a little notes here forced withdrawal is found total warfare page 258 and how to do this and then your margin of victory for a draw victory decisive and crushing now if you like me and you like to do battle reports on a web page or a Facebook page or whatever we have this sheet this is our uh, just a place for notes and I put turns 0 1 and 2 because 0 will be your setup turn turn 1 most times nothing happens as far as units getting killed or really uh, and then turn two things start happening turn three turn four and then we have turn five turn six turn seven and you can turn it over for additional turns or additional notes so that is your printed output and your reprint an existing roster you would click on this click on the unit you want to reprint and uh, go go from there you can select what you want to print and delete works the same way the help section uh, if you click here it'll bring this video up uh, about send feedback 
send feedback means you can write me, tell me about bugs, tell me about features you want to see, and uh, I will get it, I will read it, and this is this and updates are the only time this application transmits. And if you notice, I have no place for your email address, so if you want me to contact you, be sure to include your email. And then the last two is legal and data privacy. I will let you read those as you desire. And that is the end of the tutorial. I hope you enjoy it. If you send me bug reports, and I confirm that they're actual bugs. If you send improvements, suggestions, and I use them, I will, uh, in both cases, I will uh, credit you, put you on the role of heroes for uh, the roster builder, and uh, your name will be up until as long as the Battletech zone is. So thank you all. Have uh, a great battle. May you always win. And just remember, the object of the game is to win. The purpose of the game is to have fun. Have fun.